This is Gordon Walker, and this is his father, Chuck. The last 10 years have been a decade of change for the Walkers. In fact, neither could have anticipated just how much their lives would change. Gordon was 17 when he left the special education program at a Vancouver high school. While this age is difficult for any teenager, it can be especially difficult for teenagers with a disability. Many people thought Gordon would never learn to cooperate with others or ever get a job. He spent most of his days sitting in his bedroom alone. As the years passed, he became more and more isolated and even more withdrawn. Chuck was frustrated and concerned as he came to terms with Gordon's reality. What's Gordon going to do? How can we handle this situation? Now, where does he fit in? Yeah. You know, he's, he's, not, he's not going to, it's not going to be the normal situation. He isn't going to graduate from high school. Certainly not going to college. He's not going to get married and go away from home. And uh, there's the, the, normal, uh, the normal routine followed in our lives just isn't going to happen. So what do you do? This sense of desperation is common for many families as at some point they realize that their children's lives won't unfold typically. Chuck realized that no one was going to drop in and offer a solution, so he went looking for one. We heard about um, a committee of, age of senior citizens who was uh, looking into uh, answering the question, uh, what happens to your offspring when you die? And so, uh, I got involved in that. That committee of parents became PLAN. Chuck was a founding member, and Gordon was one of the first people PLAN worked with. The first step was getting to know him and figuring out the key issues he was dealing with. Gordon was a very silent man when I met him. He would occasionally whisper a word to me. When I would come to meet with Chuck, he would stand outside of the room and listen, but he wouldn't come in and join us. In order to give Gordon opportunities to connect with others and to make his contributions, we hired a facilitator. And her job was to get to know Gordon and to understand what his dreams were. The facilitator also began assembling a network of support for Gordon. It was an idea he wasn't thrilled with. We called a meeting in the house. He was in his bedroom as usual. And we started to talk about it. We started, we started, uh, he could hear that his name, that he was being dis under discussion. And he came out of his bedroom and he stood at the door and listened for a while. And pretty soon he came in and sat down. And that was the big breaking point. Pretty soon, after a meeting or two, he had somebody that uh, appeared to be taking an interest in him. There were people that he could talk to. There were people who would call him on the telephone. He could, he could call them. He's starting, he's starting to become a, a part of the, of the community. And, uh, and that, that was the big turning point. One day, the facilitator came into the office and she said, I've got it. When it comes to Gordon, it's all about horses. He's told me he wants to ride horses, but he also told me he wants to have a job with horses. He wants to um, be a cowboy riding on the range. He wants to own his own horse. And she said, I know somebody who rides. I want to introduce Gordon to her. So she did and her friend and Gordon went riding. And when her friend came back, she said to the facilitator, you know, he has a real gift with horses. I want to take him to the stables. So she brought Gordon down to the stables and introduced him to her friend, Julie. Julie's a horse, horse owner, and like many horse owners who live in the city, she didn't have a whole lot of time to spend with her horse. And she said to Gordon, you're welcome to come down anytime and visit my horse. Well, as you recall, Gordon was sitting at home most days, just sitting in the living room, and he had a lot of time on his hands, and he took that offer up. 
that. He went to visit her, her horse every day. The stable manager noticed Gordon's passion and commitment, and it didn't take long until he was offered a job. That was over nine years ago, and today, Gordon is in his element. He mucks out the, the, um, the stalls and helps the horses, and he's so gentle with the horses. Everybody enjoys Gordon's company, especially the horses, because he is just so gentle. He really has a way with horses and understands the horses. Right? Mm -hmm. Except one. Except one? Which horse is that? One who was stepping my foot. Oh, right. Yeah, that just happened two yeah. days, two or three Gordon's days. transformation is so much more than simply getting a job. By getting to know Gordon and learning about his passions, it was possible to help him create a vision for his future, a vision that he could follow with enthusiasm. His network has helped him in many ways, and through their contacts, he's earned a job, has a place of his own, takes care of himself, and is involved with many different people. By being involved with his network and others, Gordon has come out of his shell and shows more and more confidence each day. It's as if there's no limit to what he may be able to do. Gordon's success has had other implications too. This of course changed life for Chuck, because Chuck had planned always to stay in that family home with Gordon. And of course we had helped him create the will and estate plan to do that. Well, Chuck, once he got comfortable with the fact that Gordon was well on his own and had people in his life and so on, he decided he would move. And he sold the family home and he moved to Sea Shelt. He's a marine biologist and he wanted to be able to fish. So Chuck is fishing every day. And Gordon, well, he's with horses every day. He still works at those stables. The vet, when she comes, she always makes sure that Gordon is there because he calms the horses better than anyone. There you go. Four old goats, Gordon. <laughs> <laughs> two here and two here. There you go. Hey, boys. Oh, Jesus. I guess I would have to say that Gordon is probably one of my very, very best and closest friends. We, we, we had a really remarkable trail ride uh, this year when we went, we were out for a week and we hadn't done anything together. I mean, we worked together every day kind of thing, but we hadn't done anything really uh, on a sort of a 24 hour uh, a day basis. And um, he was a really special person to be out with. And, and, uh, circumstances, what I mean, they certainly weren't uncomfortable or anything like that. But uh, just to have somebody that uh, that um, you can share uh, the outdoors with, you share your passion for riding and horses and animals with, they're absolutely astounding person. And it, he's, he's brought a lot to my life. Seeing Gordon today, it's hard to believe that he was well into his 30s and was living yep. such an isolated life without any interests or dreams, or even any hope. The courage Gordon has shown in finding his own way, in getting involved, in overcoming his fears, hasn't been lost on Chuck. To see uh, this happen, to see him being involved more and more in the, in the community, and gaining, you know, gaining confidence, and speaking out, well, that just made my life. <laughs>